Ashley Babbitt, the uh, Capitol rioter uh, who broke in and was a few steps away from actually getting to Congressman from that one barrier of the window that was broken when she was shot and killed on January 6th. Apparently had a birthday over the weekend. Um, so former President Donald Trump took this opportunity uh, to submit a video to an event that uh, they were having in Texas called Texas Loves Ashley Babbitt Rally. Um, so he took part in that, he submitted a video congratulating, thanking and really um, really turning her into the martyr that uh, many conservatives under Trump would like her to be. Uh, so let's take a look at things he had to say at this event. It is my great honor to address each of you gathered today to cherish the memory of Ashley Babbitt, a truly incredible person. To Ashley's family and friends, please know that her memory will live on in our hearts for all time. She defended our nation overseas, including in Iraq, to fight in the war on terror. On that horrible day of January 6th, Ashley arrived at the United States Capitol. She was shot and tragically killed. Today would have been her birthday. Happy birthday, Ashley. Happy birthday. We're looking at you and you're looking down on your family and on us. Together we grieve her terrible loss. There was no reason Ashley should have lost her life that day. We must all demand justice for Ashley and her family. So on this solemn occasion, as we celebrate her life, we renew our call for a fair and nonpartisan investigation into the death of Ashley Babbitt. I offer my unwavering support to Ashley's family. Like all Americans, you deserve a fair process, you deserve answers, and you deserve justice. Thank you for being here. God bless you, God bless Ashley's incredible memory. And God bless America. So there you have uh, President Trump doing the things that we've already seen happening with the Ashley Babbitt situation. Um, there's a martyr situation that they're trying to build here. And as it continues to build, we're starting to see more and more, um, I guess, serious and, and heartfelt and deep thoughts. And honestly, building her up as a person uh, throughout her entire life, it sounded like a State of the Union type of speech where they have like a, a, a someone who wasn't doing anything, someone who was a victim, maybe someone who got some help, someone who advanced and achieved something else in life against all odds, an inspirational story. You would forget that we're talking about someone who broke into the Capitol along with her fellow insurrectionist and was the one after a window was broken out and someone screamed, gun, 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 continued to climb through the window and you could actually see elected officials on the other side of that door. You would think none of that happened based off of what we just saw him say right there about her life and her successes and what she's done for the country. None of that was brought up. And then she walked through a window after breaking into the Capitol to defend the lie that I had been telling about the election. Which brings me to why he's even doing this, because it's about him. Now her family can grieve and, 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 and mention the person that they lost. But someone who takes advantage of it, it's, it's also slapping the face to her family. The people who probably are the only ones that should grieve about what happened when they knew her. Anyways, um, it, it, it just struck me that way and annoyed me. Um, but um, SiriusXM host Dean Obadala, he also saw some similarities about the, the way Trump is approaching this martyrdom issue with the way someone else did. So let's go to some of those graphics that he tweeted out about. Uh, Dean did write, Trump is making Ashley Babbitt into MAGA's version of the Nazis Horst Wessel. Uh, he, he was killed in 1930 by Hitler's political enemies. Hitler and Goebbels made him a martyr for the cause. It inspires the base to sacrifice their lives for the leader. He continued on, Trump continues to make, ooh, Trump continues to make Ashley Babbitt a martyr for his cause because she was killed waging Trump's coup. This is exactly what Hitler did after his failed 1923 coup. He honored those killed in the coup attempt to inspire more people to wage violence on his behalf. Um, and there's he also included a picture of uh, of Hitler talking to a widow, um, a widow of one of uh, one of the people that was a part of Hitler, uh, Hitler's uh, his uh, Nazi party member who died. So it's these similarities that come. And honestly, a lot of times I do get frustrated by the comparisons to Hitler and both sides of the aisle do it. And in some aspects it's true, in some aspects it's not. Other times they're over over uh, hyping it or just there's a little aspect. This seems to kind of hit on the nose here for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it, and it doesn't always have to be. Therefore, he's a, all these folks were Nazis. Now I'm sure many of them uh, may have some feelings about Nazis that aren't all that negative. But um, 
This seems to kind of make sense to me. Yeah, so look, first of all, you can say Hitler, you can say almost any extremist, including by the way, Muslim fundamentalists. So what do they do? They glorify the martyrs. So oh, you do a suicide bombing, well then you're the biggest hero of the revolution. And their families are celebrated, money is sent to their families. Mm -hmm. And, and by, well, what's Trump doing? Celebrating their, her family, she's a, a martyr and hero of the revolution. And and it, it's and I say Islamic fundamentals, but you could relate Tamil Tigers, kamikaze fighters, all suicide uh, uh, bombers, fighters, etc., are celebrated as martyrs, and so and Hitler did the same thing. Now, why? Because exactly what Dean is talking about here: inspire others to do likewise. Remember, losing your life for the leader is a great idea. That's why we joke around about, uh, you know, the uh, again the Islamic fundamentalist terrorists, uh, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of of Muslims. I want to clarify that every time we talk about it, but. I, we joke around about it like, oh, if somebody tells you to put on a suicide vest, you say you first. It's simple, right? If it's such a wonderful, glorious thing to do, why don't you do it first, right? Mm -hmm. Oh No, you wanna get me to lose my life for you. And that's exactly what Trump is doing. And you could, it's the same extremist methodology that, that they all do. And, um, and so that then leads to the question of, wait a minute, Trump said in his speech that he was gonna walk with them to the Capitol. Sure did. But he didn't do that, did he? He went to the safe confines of his bunker in, in the White House and he watched it on television and then egged them on on Twitter. Uh, still was, uh, even though he knew Mike Pence's life was in danger, still doing negative tweets about Pence, is still telling the US congressman, hey, you better listen to the rioters, etc. Mm -hmm. So he's egging them on, but from a very safe distance, <laughs> like all extremist leaders, right? They're never in the battle, they're always in the back going, "Oh, you die for me, go ahead, go ahead, right? And so also, uh, the people on January 6th, uh, they wanted the name of the cop who did the shooting, right? They were like, Oh my God, we gotta know, you gotta name names, it's outrageous. Okay, fair enough. And I said, look, at some point the cop does need to come forward because anytime you have a police shooting, doesn't matter for what reason, we should have accountability. And they are government officials and they are, we're taxpayers, etc. Okay, fair enough. I'm curious if they have the same accountability for the coward men right behind Ashley Babbitt who pushed her through first, full well knowing that the police were telling him, do not come, we have guns. You're, this is where the legislators are. You're talking about executing the legislators. We're not going to allow that. You've already breached eight different security <laughs> yeah. perimeters. And is you're a giant mob and you're chanting about murdering people, do not come. And the cowards behind Ashley Babbitt said, why don't we push her through first? You wanna name the names of the people who were behind Ashley Babbitt? The men who were like, I don't want to do it. Let's get the oh, it's this woman. She she's willing to do it. Let's put her through the window. Oh, she got shot. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Which men were those? We're talking about cowards, right? All right. So I wanted to be clear about that. Uh, now, uh, back to Ashley Babbitt. She believed that they should attack the Capitol. It wasn't like she got caught up in the moment and she was getting a hot dog and next thing you know, <laughs> we're trying to end democracy and she gets <laughs> riled up and she, oh my God, how did she get into the front? I don't know. No, she has statements all over the internet, including this one. She said on Twitter right before her death, nothing will stop us. That turned out to be incorrect. Uh, they can try and try, but the storm is here and it's descending upon DC in less than 24 hours. Dark to light. The dark to light is a reference to QAnon. Uh, she believed in the QAnon insanity about satanic cults that were leading the American government. So here's a person believing that they're fighting Satan and willing to, uh, you know, put, say that the storm is gonna hit the Capitol, and she's part of the storm that hits the Capitol, and she and and cops die, etc. And now the Republicans have them her as a hero, hero of the revolution. Kyle Rittenhouse, <laughs> a guy yeah. who's deeply racist, went with weapons to a Black Lives Matter protest, looking to get in trouble. He did. He murdered a couple of people, and they have him as a hero. Marjorie Taylor Greene and and, and Lynn Wood were debating today about who supports the racist murderer more. So that's the state of the Republican Party now.
It's a win win for them. That's the way it works. So you can push them to do this stuff, they do this stuff. Then you say, oh man, they're doing it for the cause. Not for me, not for my political aspirations, not for me in this bogus reelection bid, Jank, that he's trying to pull off. <laughs> it's a constant mm -hmm. thing that he's always doing just to get people to put to be in their place. If it's not the definition of cowardice, I don't know what it is. But again, back to the whole thing about how wild this may be for what we're dealing with right now. Because I do think it's a little bit odd to wonder if, is this really happening? No, this has nothing to do with the Nazis. This has nothing to do with Hitler. This is not like any terror groups that put people ahead of, of the leadership to get things done. But you know what, sometimes you have to take it seriously and listen to people who've studied these history, historical things and see how much it repeats itself. So there was a moment on Sunday on, um, on CBS where uh, Margaret Brennan, uh, she was hosting and she was talking about General Milley's points about what we're looking at on how the things on January 6th were just a warm up act for what could happen. Now that depends on how we react to it. So I'm gonna go to what she was talking about, how shocked she was to read what some of these simulators could be and how we could really repeat this. Let's listen. You know, in the book Peril, uh, Robert Costa and, and Bob Woodward wrote, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, at the end of it, is quoted as comparing the January 6th siege of the Capitol to the great dress rehearsal. You're a Russia analyst, you know exactly. immediately what that phrase is, which is what Lenin called an uprising that preceded the revolution. I read that and I said, dear God. Yeah. I mean, he, the general is saying that this is a precursor potentially to further violence. I mean, is, is this overstating things in a historical sense? He's not overstating it at all because, I mean, we all saw in real time what happened on January 6th at the Capitol building. And then, you know, people sweeping this away, saying nothing happened here. And the next time around, you get the real thing where people actually do seize those major buildings. And that's the way it works. So when you actually listen to people tell you what's happening, we've seen it and we complain about it. We'll say, oh my God, we saw it with our own two eyes. We watched the videos, you guys are downplaying it. And it's almost in every week, a weekly discussion about reality versus this fantasy that they continue to create. But there's enough people that believe the fantasy that they'd be willing to do it again. No, we, we kind of see ourselves from this and it's, it's such an obvious thing to say. But when you stop and think about it, we see ourselves from this own point of view inside our own brains and bodies and, and visions. And we don't think anyone else really believes the nonsense that they believe because we know what we just saw. But there are people who believe it and not, and not go with what they just saw in front of them. Because there's something inside of them that gives them this belief to make Donald Trump their God, make Ashley Babbitt their martyr. And, and I don't know, at one point before they decide to hang him, want to hang him, Mike Pence, they're second in command. So this, this craziness isn't too far to consider people really going to us, because they tried. We can't downplay the fact that they tried. Yeah, 100%. So look, that reaction by the mainstream media reporter, Mark Brennan in this case, is both good news and bad news. The good news is that, hey, they're beginning to understand the severity of the issue. Yeah, he. I mean, I don't. Did they not read the same articles we read? Like, Mike Flynn went in. They had a three-hour conversation where Trump very seriously considered declaring martial law and saying the election is now null and void, and we're going to redo it under military rule. And so you're super late to the party, but thank you for showing up because I. We need more people to understand the severity of the moment. So that's the good news. The bad news is. It's amazing that they don't know it. There she is, a very legitimate, well-respected journalist in mainstream media. And she's like, dear God, like, how is this news to you? And because they've been taught, they've been brainwashed, they've been programmed, the, report, the reporters have, that you must call everything even. Like, no, you know, a coup against democracy. Or, or we continue democracy, 50-50. I've been programmed all the way from journalism school through all my career that I must call everything 50-50. So now she gets to a moment where she's like, dear God. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait really a minute. Said so. Yet, look, when the fascists take over, they're not gonna care about your rules. They're not gonna be like, oh no, let's, let's keep going with 50-50. Mm -hmm. No, it's gonna be 100 to zero. And they're not gonna, like you're not, you're playing Queensberry rules. This nonsense etiquette that doesn't exist to the fascists. And so, yeah, it's super serious. Look, finally, I, I actually have some sympathy for Ashley Babbitt. Um, because it, you read up on her uh, life story and you realize 
so she came back from the wars, already God knows what kind of trauma she suffered there. It was for no, no reason, I don't know how, what she thought of that. Ultimately, but she's for Trump who pretended to be against the wars. And then she comes back and tries to set up a business here, and like a supply pool supply business with her family. She, she gets desperate, she takes out one of those scam loans, which all across the country, you all know it if you're poor middle class. And it's charging her 169% interest. Jesus. Of course she's gonna go bankrupt, you can't pay that. That's And so then here comes a demagogue like Trump saying, "Oh, it's the immigrants, it's the Mexicans, it's the Democrats, it's the Satanists that are doing it, right? And no, it's the payday lenders <laughs> that charge you the 169% interest. But Trump likes those guys because they're his donors. So he doesn't want you to get blame the payday lenders that ruined your life. Instead, he gets you to hate Mexicans and Democrats and pretend that they're working with Beelzebub. And then you go and die for him. And at the end, he goes, ah, a girl, way to be now. Everybody, be more like Ashley. Go and die for me for something that never made sense in the first place, because it's all about him and his grotesque need for power. Understand what it is. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.